Thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. I'm excited to announce that I've partnered with Omaze to offer you a chance to win $100,000 in cash. Even better, every donation benefits a great cause, supporting the work of Meals on Wheels. All you have to do is go to omaze.com slash best ever. Donate $10, and just like that, you're entered for a chance to win big. We're talking life-changing big. Donating to a good cause and a chance to win $100,000? Wait, could I enter, or is that like a conflict of interest? I know, but it's $100,000. That's a lot of money. I could finally get those eyebrow extensions I've been wanting for a really long time. No? Okay. Well, you could win $100,000. So, for your chance to win $100,000, go to omaze.com slash best ever and enter now. The best part is, every donation supports Meals on Wheels. We're doing an amazing job of delivering great food to those in need. So act now. That's omaze.com slash best ever. Go there, donate, and good luck. Now, on to the show. It's just straight up raw, basically plucked from the beach. Wash with water, cut, and now we're gonna try it out. Cheers. Every culture and every chef interprets ingredients differently, especially when it comes to seafood. I love that it's just 100% pure fish and it's so warm in my body. Oh, you got it. Last time, we were introduced to the giant cobia, prepared two very different ways, by a Vietnamese chef, then by a French chef. When you scale it, do you pour super hot water on it? Absolutely not. I want to keep the skin and the flesh super fresh. Today, we're back at it. I want to see how two new chefs from different parts of the world Why did you squeeze it? prepare one of the world's largest clam species. We're not going to eat that, right? One ingredient. It's not dressed up. It's not seasoned. Two vastly different styles. You don't know what is it, but when you eat and you say, oh, wow, it's good up. Watch, guys, I'm gonna be saying that pretty soon. <laughs> but first, let's meet our meat. Welcome back to another video. We are here once again at Kalisa Food. This place is specializing in premium seafood imported from around the world. Last time I rocked up here, I can't lift it with one hand. They helped us get our hands on this giant Tasmanian <laughs> crab, costing $780. Today, you know our focus is the gooey duck. They have some huge ones here. I mean, the biggest you've ever seen, but first, Look at that, the crystal crab. This comes from nearby Australia. Give a more active one. This one already gave up on life. Oh, we actually tried this before. Man, absolutely delicious. I feel bad saying it right in front of them. Kalisa has over half a million dollars worth of seafood just waiting to be adopted into their forever home. Look at this mf -er. Look at that. These like glow in the dark orange legs, like a glow stick at a nightclub. Hey, you jump. That was exciting. On to the actual food we came here for. Let's go. This is one of the world's biggest clams. They're, these are beloved around Asia for one big reason. First off, it's pronounced gooey duck. Can you guess why? Second of all, it does ah. that. Jesus Christ. I wasn't ready for that. Wow. Even though this creature is beloved here, it turns out they don't come from Asia at all. Dum, 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 dum. These suckers come all the way from the USA's northwest coast. Among burrowing clams, they are the world's largest. They bury themselves several feet underground and just hang, man. They're not bothering anyone. Oh my gosh, I found a gooey duck. Dum, 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 dum. This guy can live up to 140 years. That's before gravity was even invented. I'm not sure why they squirt out water. It's gotta be the worst defense mechanism ever. A little spritz of water, it's kind of refreshing, actually. Ah, did I just do that? The gooey duck is loved all around Asia, especially China. That's why we've come here. Yang Din is a multi-award winning restaurant featuring authentic Cantonese cuisine. Chef, no. he's about to dismember this member. And I only trust Mr. Lee to handle my $150 friend. It's almost 2.2 kilograms big. Yes. Well, oh, uh-oh, it's losing weight right now. It's leaking. Chef, you could take it away. Okay. So he has to go in with basically a paring knife. The gooey duck does not enjoy that per se. And, oh, it is much softer than this part down here. So he removed a testicle. No, I don't know. He removed the guts, essentially. Ugh, what is in there? I'm told also that you can eat it, but today we are not. Next, going in the hot water. I think he wants to loosen up this leathery part and perhaps strip it off. 
Yeah, it's slipping off. The skin looks insane. It looks like when a snake sheds its skin. That, I think we're not gonna eat that. But maybe they fry it and make it into little chips. It's so fascinating to see what is inside these creatures. We should probably look up the Wikipedia on this animal at some point. So what lies inside my phallic friend? Inside its neck, there are two siphons. They suck in water containing plankton. Filter that for food, then squirt the excess water out another tube. Right now, the chef is chilling the meat. I think that's gonna make it a lot easier to cut through. Ugh. The body part goes back in the water. Somehow, this is gonna become sashimi. I don't know how. I don't know if he knows how. <laughs> oh, no, it's happening right before my eyes. Oh, that's remarkable. So he's cutting these very, very thin slices. That looks really cool. Of the gooey duck dishes they make here, straight up fresh and raw sashimi gooey duck is the most commonly ordered. Oh, there's more. Wait, is this gonna be sashimi too? Yes. This is the body. This is what was contained inside the shell. So far, the texture seems to be quite a bit different. It's much softer. It looks smooth and silky. Chef reveal. Huh? Handsome guy. Such skill. Can we try the neck just like this? Okay. Okay. It's really interesting. It's a little bit briny, not fishy at all, and a bit sweet. The texture itself is kind of crunchy, though. I want to try it with a little bit of this soy sauce. Oh, delicious. Just a little bit of soy sauce kind of washes away any brininess. It's delicious. I love it. This other part, I'm not so sure about. I think we'll just eat it plain. Oh, okay. Wow, that's so many layers to it. A little spongy, a little crispy, and it feels almost like raw liver. So it tastes like what it looks like. It feels like what it looks like. Oh ho, oh ho, oh ho. Our second dish. This time, he brings his work to the wall. There is more than one way to prepare the gooey duck coming up. He's gonna make a stir fry. Chef, take it away. First, only using the neck, but cutting it into thicker pieces. Apply a flour coat and flash fry for a few seconds. Do the same with the mushrooms, then blanch it together with celery. Stir fry with exo sauce, a classic Cantonese condiment made of dried seafood, chili peppers, onion, and garlic. I'm very excited because I've had gooey duck before. In fact, I've had Cantonese prepared gooey duck in Guangzhou, but I just had the sashimi. I've never had anything like this. The texture, the flavor should be all very different. Let's start by scooping up some food. That's for my team later, and this is for me. Part of me wants to like build up to the meat, but most of it is actually just meat. Okay, how about this? I'll eat a piece of vegetable. Oh, it's a really yummy sauce. And it reminds me a little bit of oyster sauce. All right, so that's enough build up, right? Time for some meat. Whoa, you hear that? This is a good drinking food, can I tell you that? The flavor is delicious. The texture is what throws me off the most. This is what makes me sad about my homeland. You know, in the US, people aren't so used to different textures. And honestly, they're not very accepting of textures that are outside of like chewy, crunchy, done. I mean, if something in the US was like this, I don't think people would like it. The taste is so delicious. It's very sweet. This is what's great about food from China is they just have such a diversity of textures. They know how to layer flavor, but they're all about funky and different, interesting textures too. Hit it with some more veggie, huh? Mm -hmm. Before the meal is complete, Mr. Lee offers his last dish prepared at my table. Oh, what is going on here? What's in there? What's in there? What's in there? Oh, no, it's just broth. Actually, the broth is made by cooking down everything on this table, including dried scallops, chicken feet, pork, jinhua ham, dried orange skin, chickpeas, and a freaking chicken. I don't know why, but it must be done this way. This mixture stews for eight hours. Then everything is removed, leaving behind a sleek, golden, flavorful broth. Oh, it smells yummy. It smells like pork and chicken. <sighs> He's got a ladle here. He's filling it with bean sprouts, putting in some of this thinly sliced gooey duck, and he gives it a little bit of a dip and then pours it out. Oh, it's too much of a dip. Oh, a little bit more of a dip. Oh, no, too much. And now it's just right. Thank you, chef. So um, these are like a baked rice sheet. That is some good sheet. So I want to put a little bit of this on here. Most awkward bite ever, but okay, I'll take it. It's a little cliffhanger. Is the chef watching me eat? I just get self-conscious sometimes. Mmm, oh, it's really delicious. Such a mild broth. 
The bean sprouts adds kind of an earthy note, but really that gooey duck is such an interesting, malleable creature because every way you cook it, every way you prepare it, the texture changes a little bit. Here, when it's just in a hot broth, it's quite tender and quite soft. So what we've seen so far is a kind of a traditional Cantonese take on this ingredient. From here, we're gonna head over to a local Vietnamese place and see how they take the same exact ingredient but prepare it completely differently. Let's go. My final destination, Yao Sung Seafood, a 75-year-old establishment. Right now, I'm with Chef Vin. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Our gooey duck will be handled by the owner, Chef Vin. Chef, I'm very curious. Gooey duck is not anywhere close to Vietnam. Why do people here like it so much? For myself and for a lot of people, gooey duck is one of the best sashimi, best texture and flavor. Today, you're going to be making four different dishes, including a dessert. Gooey duck dessert. That's right. He spent six years studying the culinary arts in the USA. Lightly poached it in medium heat water. Then brought that knowledge back to Vietnam. I shock it in ice bath right away. Combining high-end cooking techniques with traditional Vietnamese flavors. You see, after poaching oh. in water, it's just go off like that. Like a surgeon taking off a glass, or like a, like a surgeon, let's stick with the surgeon. <laughs> Here is the back hole. Back hole. I mean, it looks like you could put quarters in there and maybe get a Coke out of it. Chef Vin slices the gooey duck differently for each dish. Noodle shapes, cube shape, and even sashimi slices, which will look different from what we tried earlier. One of the dish is noodle make out of gooey duck. You don't know what is it, but when you eat and you say, oh wow, it's gooey duck. For the appetizer, he uses the noodle-shaped clam slices. Put a little bit of pomelo, a little bit of mango, coconut, onion slice. This is raw rum and this is mint. Gooey duck and a little touch of lemon. And we're gonna sauce it with the special nook jam and mix it up real well. Toss it in a coconut. Yes. Fry oh, potato. This is fried already? Yes, already fried. Oh. It's good to eat. Oh. And finally, we're gonna put some watermelon foam. I'm gonna go straight down, do a noodle pull. Mmm. What do you think? That's awesome. You like it? No doubt. It's interesting. The gooey duck just becomes another element in the dish. It's adding some flavor to it and some great texture, but it kind of works well with everything else in of there. Course. It really reminds me of like a papaya salad in the central region. It's like one of my favorite foods in Vietnam. These tiny, like little fried potatoes, it's so crunchy when you bite into it, and then it just kind of disintegrates. Great uh, starter. Yes. Mm. Bite two, Yap Sung's signature dish, containing a flavor-boosting sphere of peanut sauce on a clamshell along with marinated gooey duck. Last, some price-boosting precious metals. I got a little bit of a taste in the kitchen, and right now I'm about to receive my first course. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. Let's open her up and maybe get a big whiff, too. It's like a campfire, so rustic. But my God, look at this, gold. I love gold. I think it's already inside the utensil. I'm just gonna toss it back. Oh, you wouldn't think, you might not think. It's like eating oysters and smearing jiffy peanut butter on there. That sounds weird, but here, I love that. That's super good. The sphere really like popped in my mouth and it's just full of delicious, savory, creamy peanut sauce. And then the gooey duck, it's just like this crispy texture with a bunch of smoky flavor intertwined among everything in there. That is so delicious. The only lament I have is that was my portion, about five grams of food. <sighs> the more money you pay, the less you get, but flavor. Guys, the dish is small, the flavor, very big. Now, the main course. This dish is made with minced pork, slow-cooked bone and tendon, gooey duck, and kanji, with planted flowers, truffle flakes, and ground pepper. And this is our main course for today. This is super interesting because this is kanji. Essentially, it's a rice porridge. It's been upgraded, upscaled, fancified, expensified, and seafoodified with that gooey duck. But it also has, I mean, a real black truffle mushroom. You can't tell if this has been sitting in the kitchen for like three months under the sink. There's like little plants growing out of it. I'm gonna take my spoon. Oh, that's nice. What else is in there? First bite, surprised me a little bit. There's like a hard cartilage inside. I'm looking for the gooey duck. Found it. It's an interesting kanji. It's hasty or, or gluey. It has a different texture for sure. The gooey duck inside, a little softer because it's warm, but it still has a bit of a crisp at the same time. Overall, for an upgraded, kind of scaled up kanji. Super successful, I think it's awesome, and I love what he's done with the appearance of it. From here, we have one more dish, and it's actually gonna be the dessert. That's right, there's a dessert made from a freaking clam. 
First, the foie gras hits the grill. Then the gooey duck, marinated in coffee, pairs with the fatty duck liver. Is the dessert similar to a real Vietnamese dessert? Yes, that is based on my childhood memory. This uh, cotton candy. Our final course right here, the dessert. Very surprising, something I did not expect to see. All right, it's kind of dying, it's kind of fading. The dessert that no one expected to see, I'm gonna try it now, it's a one biter. Oh my gosh, oh no, why does that work? That doesn't make any sense. We know that sweetness works well with barbecued meats, right? So there's something good about sugary sweetness with meat and with that smoky flavor, but man, it pairs together so well in a way you would not expect, that is crazy. And then just like that, it's gone. And then you wonder if it was a dream the whole time. That was amazing. I, there's gotta be a way to order like 26 more of these. Overall, I'm super impressed. At our first location, I thought they did pretty much everything you could do with gooey duck. And then we came here, and then they put it in cotton candy. It seems that this ingredient is as dynamic as the chef's imagination. With this ingredient, using it in a different way, some utilizing more of its texture, some more of its flavor, and each one was delicious and unique in its own way. I'm very impressed. Merch alert. This is for all you head to tail adventurous eaters. Always down for trying something new. No waste, more taste. Only available to the end of March. It's basically like it. <laughs> the texture really changes depending on what you do, what what you what you do with it, what how you hit it with the heat. The texture we're gonna cut it in different size, different shape in order to not be so boring. Stars, rectangles. All right, let's cut. Okay. Let's go. So now Quiet. It's so colorful, there's pink, yellow, green. It's like a pastel thing. It's like a cool pastel, I was doing really good and then uh -huh. I got lost there. It's like a pastel box of crayons that are pastel colored. Saved it, saved it there. There you go. <laughs> so that is everything you've ever wanted to know about gooey duck, except for why it's pronounced gooey and not geo. That will have to wait until next time. That is it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A piece. Ah, oh, man, gotta get me another gooey duck. Long and mushy, wrinkly, really fun. Oh, okay. Stop. <laughs>